So we start off with most three quarter fuller shoes, whether they're bar shoes or open shoes, um, by bumping the toe, consolidate the toe, get some mass so when you come to bend the toe it doesn't weaken it. We're trying to keep some uh, material on the outside of the toe so when we, we fuller it, uh, the toe and the fullerin all runs in together. So when it comes to turning the toe of any bar shoe, um, obviously it's about trying to keep the toe balanced and keeping the toe in the middle of the section. Uh, we need to have the branches both the same and we set the toe off from that. And because you're taking such a long piece of material, you've added you know, the amount of inches you need for the space of the heels for the bars and to forge them. Um, you really need to make the size of toe for the, for the size of foot that you're shoeing. So you don't want to be absorbed into putting a too big a toe in just because you have so much length of steel. So it's identifying the correct size toe for the length of steel you've got, getting it balanced and having your, both your branches coming off the toe at the same measurement. So with the heart bar, uh, quite a quick way of doing them, as I'm showing you here, is to um, do the heart bar so you can weld it from the inside of the shoe. So we're setting the bar up from the outside of the bar, uh, mark usually around two and a half inches depending on the size of the foot. You're going to stretch it about half an inch to three quarters possibly. So here I'm just showing you how to point the outside of the bar down ready to turn in and to scarf it before you turn it in. So both sides come together uh, by scarfing it um, and bringing the body of the heart bar together. There's actually very little drawing to do once you come to fire weld and stick them together. Um, you could, there, are, there is another way of turning the shoes inside out but this can get messy. This is quite a quick way of um, setting a heart bar up and uh, getting it ready for fit. So once we've prepped up the scarf and we're ready to turn the first branch, I usually mark the dot of where to turn the first part on the outside of the branch. So with it sitting up looking at you, you can uh, use that as your guide to turn the end of the first part of the bar over towards the inside. It's important to, um, to keep the, the, the branch straight at the back from the heel and then before you turn the branch to sort of break its neck behind the heel to get some shape of the heel behind it.
Now the important part with any bar shoe or heart bar formation is to make sure you get both branches the same. So whatever you turn up is the same on the other side. Um, otherwise it's going to be difficult to fit to the foot or the configuration and the outline and the measurements you're trying to do it to. So it's about making a pair of heels, whether it's an open shoe or a bar shoe, a straight bar or a heart bar. Um, you need to have equal sides and equal forgings. So you need to stick to your measurements, try and remember what you've drawn when you're setting up the heart bar, when you're drawing the outsides down. So you make a pair. So as you can see here, before I've actually turned the first branch, I've gone on to the second branch to set up the same scarf and the same turn. So I end up with a pair of inverted bars that look the same. Um, they have the same distance from the inner bar to the start of the frog piece of the heart bar and everything looks the same so when you come to turn the shoe um, it's going to come together very easily and very quickly it's about going back to basics if you don't stick to a basic format of measurements and um, critical forging elements and getting consistency then you won't get consistency to your shoes and how they come together so again with the second branch same formation as the first turn it using your marks that you've set up uh, turn the arrowhead over keeping the back straight on the branch so you don't get too much bend on it too early. If you get too much bend on it too early and then you turn the branch, you're going to end up with one side of the shoe shorter than the other one. So it's important to turn them as equal as you can and make them in pairs. So we're just running up hemming up the branch, um, squeezing the section a little bit as well as putting some angle on with the hammer uh, before I fuller it. I have two fullers, I have a fuller that's uh, a straight blade, which is like a starter fuller, runs me a nice straight line, puts me in about a third of the way, and then um, once I turn the, the branch, I shall put in my finished fuller, which will crisp it up and take it to its take it to the depth that I want. So once we've got both halves set up and ready to go and everything is equal, everything's been turned the same, we're ready to turn the shoe. Obviously if it's to a foot, you're making the shoe with that in mind to fit that foot. Um, this is just a specimen hind heart bar, so we're just going to make a relatively symmetrical hind heart bar um, and just to get it as equal as we can within the parameters of, of good shoe making and balance.
So we're ready to turn the second branch of our shoe. Um, just adjusting the scarfs. You can do that as you make the shoe, just to make sure they're sitting in correctly, uh, ready for the other side. And obviously turn your second half and it should match everything you've done on the first side. It's important at this phase when you're trying to bring the heart valves together uh, in this formation we've done the we've done the scarfing to allow for each half body of, of the bar to absorb into one another so when we bring them together they're sort of sit, sitted against each other in a slanted way so they butt up to each other um, so it's important at this phase to make sure you get them the right way around which one goes on top of the other one um, otherwise you're going to end up with, in the reverse and then you'll be flat on flat and you'll have too much body in the frog to get rid of. So they have to be um, just butted up together as you'll see here. So it's just being organised to know which go one goes on top of the other one. Okay, so when I bring them out and they're ready to, to weld, I usually hit the apex of the frog first just to get that stuck before I go on to move on to the scarfs. Um, I don't do the scarfs first because I don't want the apex of the frog to slip or move off one another. So I stick them in the apex first very quickly and then move on to the scarfs um, and then quickly turning it over and doing the opposite scarf. And then you can work across the whole body of the frog. Okay, so on to our second heat, as you can see, it's quite a quick way of making a heart bar. The quickness comes from setting it up in the first place in the bar. When we set it on the end of the branches and we forge the shape in, put the scarves in ready for them to, both to be absorbed onto one another in a balanced formation from the measurements we took. So once we've got this second heat done, we should nearly be there. Um, and there's not a lot of stretch on the frog bar itself, on the heart towards the toe because you've set it up you should get about maybe half an inch from it if that but the um, the strength of the heart bar depending on what you're using it for the type of foot whether it's surgical or it's you know usual support for a heart bar the, the uses are endless so but you can make the heart bars very light in their body um, they don't have to be thick all the way through sometimes I like them to be sort of angled down from the ground surface down to the tip um, just so that it keeps off a light bar to them. And with fuller shoes, and the same with plain stamp, no matter what shoe they are, I like to press the, um, the ground surface of the section down very slightly, just forge it very flat on the ground surface. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of pull on the surface because of the fuller, even if fullers are sharp. So it's important to keep the shoes flat on the foot surface, but I also turn them over and I work and planish the top surface of the section. And it gives you a very flat, planished section. So when you come to use your finishing system or your file, they're very easy to file up. There's no impressions in the steel. You've prepped it all with the hammer. And it makes your fullering top look very crisp and very sharp, even before you've put a finishing system sander on it or a file.
Uh, hammer boxing and finishing, hammer finished, can be very effective. Um, it can prep you up for using your file to finish very, very quickly. Um, and also it gives you a nice crisp finish on the reserve ground surface of the shoe if you're pressing the other side at an angle and it gives you sort of sharper corners and shows the shoe off and it's just good for hammer skills and it does make it quicker when you're filing because you've already beveled off the area so you, doesn't, you don't have to cut into the steel as much. It's always important to have a good finish to your holes and a good nail fit. So sharp tools equals, you know, a good sharp nail fit. Um, so I, I like to keep my tools up together, my stamps correct to the size of nail I'm use, using relative to the section. And the Pritchells, you know, they're a, um, a cutting tool. They're not a punch or a drift like what you just use to make the nail hole. They're purely there to fire out the small amount of steel and use as a cutter. And the sharper they are, you know, the more cut through you'll get and the better nail fit.